All right, folks, now we're in Snap, and what we're going to do is we're going to edit this code. Uh, you see there on the left of your screen is a factorial function handed to you, okay? We're going to show you how to go step by step and change any function to trace when you enter and when you exit the function, okay? So let's start together. You first go to the variables menu. In the variables menu, you're going to make a variable called trace. So I did that already, and I've got a guy called trace here. Then, the first line is you need to set trace to, I'm going to enter presentation mode, set trace to be the empty list, okay? So now trace is going to be a list. What you're going to be doing is adding things to that list as you enter and exit the function, okay? So that resets it. The next line, you delete all of trace. So, so this trace guy ends up being an empty list. If it had something from the last time you called it, this line delete all removes it all. And then what you usually do, because this is a reporter, you can't just take this block, you can't just take this reporter and put it kind of at the bottom of the red guy. You can't just put it here. I can't just like stick this like here. It's, you can't attach it. So we almost always, I add a say to it, okay? And I put it under say, which means you're going to be called, it's going to call it, and then say, the, the sprite will then say the output of that, okay? So here's your trace over here, which I'm going to close uh, for a second. I'm not, don't focus on the sprite. You don't care about that. So now I'm going to change the code. How do I change the code? Well, I first, and here's my answer. I'm going to take the, swap this out. I'm like Julia Child, where I already had this. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you swap it out. Watch this. Okay, and here, there. Okay, I'm going to fix it up a little bit in a second, okay? So what I do, what I've done now is I, I'm going to take this guy out, fix that here later in a second, and put this guy here, duplicate this, okay? All right, put this guy right there. Yoink, okay. So here's what I've done. What have I done to this code? Let's take a look at it here. I first added the add something to list command. That's the first thing you see, okay? And what it means is I want to tell you, I want to report when the function gets entered and just say, hey, I got entered. But I want to know how much I got entered. What's the, what are the arguments you passed into me? If I just said factorial was called, I don't know what the arguments were. They're going to be smaller and smaller, right? The four, it first gets called by four, then three, then two, then one, right? So I add join words. When you use join words, it puts a space between. We learned that last time. So join words n factorial, OK? That means that's like an input call. That's like saying n factorial is being called. And when it gets called, the moment it gets called, it adds that to trace. So it kind of remembers it. Then every time to exit, every time you see a reporter, when you report from inside a, a reporter, that means you're leaving the function, right? We know that. It's like the return call. You're leaving the function. So you have to kind of make sure to add something to trace before you leave the function. So what we typically do is you add another, add something to trace right before the reporter. Before it was if n equals 0, report 1. So I say add join words returning 1. See, now I know I was coming out of that returning 1. Okay, to trace. And so now that gets added before the reporter, and now, right before it gets done, it's going to say, okay, let trace know I'm done, and now I can still return. Okay? And what I've now done is, the last three, I've made a script variable called answer. I've set, that's a local variable. Whenever you need a local kind of scratch, for, like scratch paper, you use a script variable for that, and you can rename that from the default of A. You set answer to the actual thing you would have reported. You know, before this used to say, otherwise report n times n minus 1 factorial. So now you call that, set the answer to be that return value. Then you say, add join words returning answer to trace. This is all, by the way, in your slides, so don't worry about writing this down. And report answer. So all this is doing, all I've done, and this again is there for you, is I'm saying, when I want to trace where I am, I need to to announce to trace entering and exiting the function. That's all it is. OK? So let's try it. So let's say OK. And now what happens? OK? Let's now call this. OK? Yoink. I'm calling it now. And it said 24. 4 factorial 24. So I'm happy with that. Let's look at trace. Let's go here. And let's do this. Oop. I think I have to bring this down here. Let's try this. Look at this. Here's trace. And watch what happened. Watch what happened. And look how exactly what I did in my simulation in the last video. 
we did exactly this. Four came in. Four didn't know how to answer. So four said, what am I? I'm four times three factorial. I got to hire a three. And guess what? It woke up a three factorial. See, it called a three. So four was waiting, like standing waiting while the three wakes up. The three says, I'm not zero. I need to be waiting while I take my three in one hand and I call the two. And it kept walking down the sequence. So four called three, called two, called one, called zero. There were five copies of subcontractors who were waiting to, to return to the people who called them, and they couldn't, they were still waiting. Because they were all, you know, everybody's waiting for the number smaller than them. Zero finally gets done, and zero gets done and returns one. Seven gets done and returns, re seven, which is the seventh guy in the list, one returns one, two returns two, three returns six, ten, four finally, four right returns 24. Okay, so this is an example of how to take a block of code, generic, I'm just doing it with factorial, but it really helps as the car, as your code gets really big and you've got many things calling many things, you add these trace lines to anybody you want to trace, and every time it gets called, you just say, add it to trace. You don't always have to add returning from, you know, factorial either. You can just say who's calling what. So you don't, you can, just having the first guy is often enough to help you with your debugging. Just adding, as I said, this first line, saying, I'm in this guy, it's the first thing you do, it's really easy. This first guy, add, s join words, what the name of the function is, and what the arguments are to trace. And that'll help you debug your code in the future, right? So that's, not only we're talking, we just helped you with how to understand factorial a little bit more, but we also helped you with, in general, a, a, tech, a tip, a technique for having you debug your own programs in Snap by adding the trace, okay? So hopefully that was helpful. We'll see you in the next video.